What is going on guys? Today we're going to be installing an Audi R8 style steering wheel on my RS3. Now I believe this works on the A3, uh, 2017 facelift A3 as well. Definitely the S3 with the push to start. But as you guys can see, I got this straight from the manufacturer in China for only about $600, which I know is crazy considering they're going for over $1,200. But I'll be showing you at the end of the video after we install this, how I was able to buy it, where I got it from and how you can do it too. So make sure to watch the video to the end. But as you guys can see, check this bad boy out. This is what we're gonna be putting in here. Full carbon fiber Alcantara, and it's got the Audi R8 style buttons. I've been really wanting one of these steering wheels and it's been super hard to find a video of people installing this on their car. So I was like, screw it, I'm gonna do it. I'll show you guys how the professional way is to install this step by step. So definitely stick around and let's get right into it. So besides the steering wheel, it also comes with this right here, this wiring harness, which looks super confusing. It's really not, I'll show you how to do it. But this is what powers the start stop button. Now I also highly recommend you guys pick up these fuse taps right here. I'll post the link to these down in the description below. It's on Amazon for like 10 bucks. You don't need all these, we only need one, but just I recommend getting this for easy install and easy uh, disassembly if you were to ever to take the wheel off or sell the car. All right, so the first thing that needs to come off is going to be the Audi airbag. Ignore the fact that I already have a carbon steering wheel on. It doesn't have the push to start button, so now I have one that does. But the first thing that has to come off is this airbag. Now, in order to do that, obviously the car's off, but the battery needs to be still on. So we're gonna drop this down and pull it out as far as we can so that we have room to access the back of the steering wheel here. So we're gonna start the car, and we're gonna turn the wheel all the way to the left to get to the back right over here. All right, so either using a flathead screwdriver or a Phillips, you wanna stick it behind here and pry in this little hole here and pop one side out. You can see it is a clip. It's gonna be super difficult because there's no light here. But in that hole, there's a clip that you have to push down on and it'll pop one side out. So pushing down, it should, just like that, we just popped one side of the steering wheel, uh, the airbag off. So you can see right here, one side is off. So now we need to start the car and turn the wheel the other way to get the other side off. So now we do it on the other side. So we take this, put it through the hole. Right, we're pushed down. All right, and now we are off. Just like that, you can see this is fully off. But before we start unplugging stuff, we need to unplug the battery before working on any airbags. So another tip before you unplug the battery, make sure to turn the wheel back. You can do it without it, but it's just easier if you turn the wheel back here for aligning everything later down. All right, so for the RS3 only, the battery is gonna be in the trunk, but for the A3 and the S3, you're gonna to have to do this in the front under the, uh, the hood of the car. So popping this up, obviously slide it over, disconnect the negative terminal and set it to the side so that we don't have power going to the car anymore. We can cover this up so that nothing touches the negative. And now the car, should be off completely. All right, so taking this off reveals, I believe, two things you have to unplug. You can see right here, there's the one yellow connector, which is for your airbag. It's taking a little pick, you can use your finger, whatever you feel more comfortable with, that unplugs that. And then right here is the last connector, and this is for your modules, for your buttons right here, which is pretty easy to unplug too. There's a little black or a little, uh, you can see right here, silver clip. If you put a little pick underneath, right out, it's good to go. So the next thing you need to get are, I believe this is an M12 or a triple square. And then you need a, I believe a 13 millimeter socket. You put it on and there's a bolt right here that needs to come off. It's really tight. But what you do, you stick it in, give it a good crank and it'll come out and then your wheel will come off. With the bolt off, you can pull lightly. We now have the steering wheel off. So just a quick disclaimer, what you have right here is your ribbon cable, which sends power to your airbag and the buttons. 
This is very delicate. You do not want this to spin or get displaced. If you accidentally turn this and put the wheel on, you'll rip it. Big problem. You don't want to have that issue. So always recommend taping it real quick so that you know it does not go anywhere. You don't want anybody touching this. So just tape it off and leave it alone. Now with the wheel free from the car, it's time to transfer everything from your original steering wheel to the new one. The first thing we need to do is remove the black trim from the wheel by carefully pulling up around the edges. It's good to have a plastic pry tool nearby as it does come in handy. Now the trim itself is only pushed in. There aren't any clips. So slowly working your way around it will actually get it off. You will need to use a little bit of force around the button as those are in pretty tight inside the wheel. Be very careful when lifting the trim up because there are wires on either side that need to be disconnected before the trim can come off freely. With the trim off, we need to separate the buttons from the trim itself by carefully pushing them out from the back and pulling the trim out. Now I can start to reassemble the new wheel. First thing I did was pop the buttons back into place and then I removed my paddle shifters from my old wheel and transferred them to the new one. One thing I forgot to show you in the video is your paddle shifters are held down by a screw on either side. Now it's clear as day right in front of you. I just happen to have forgotten to transfer those screws to the new paddle shifters when I got my new steering wheel, but I did make sure to install them off camera on this one. Next, I unplugged the old buttons cable on the back and plugged in the new aftermarket ones. With that out of the way, it's now time to reinstall the trim. I plugged the paddle shifters back in and carefully pushed the trim back in, making sure all the tabs are fitted in their spots correctly. Everything finally reinstalled back in correctly on the steering wheel with our drive select and start stop buttons. We now have to reinstall this back onto the steering column. So we remove the tape and as you can see, it's gonna be super hard, but there's a very tiny, tiny, tiny little dot dot right there. Yep, there it is. That line is what adjusts, is what lines up with this. You can see right there, right there. And then that has to go perfectly over the steering wheel to make sure everything is aligned intact. Then we take the M12 bolt, screw that in. You wanna make sure, and we're gonna really tighten this down. It's good. Now we can reinstall our airbag. Plug this in right here. That's in. And the next one is gonna be putting that in there, but I just wanna kinda of tuck these wires away a little bit. In. And now we can put the airbag back on. And we have an airbag and the steering wheel is good to go. So now that we have the steering wheel installed, the drive select button should automatically work. But the problem now is the start stop button doesn't work. In order to get the start stop button to work, we have to wire this control module to our original start stop button. And in order to do that, we have to take this apart. It's really not that difficult, so just follow along with me. Only using plastic pry tools, pry away the furthest part of the plastic, right where it meets the bottom of the center console. Going back and forth on both sides while pulling up, it will come free. With that separated, we need to remove the shift knob. Carefully pulling at the leather using a pry tool, it will come free from the surrounding trim. Now listen closely on this next part. Slide the leather all the way up and turn the plastic piece on the bottom counterclockwise. It only goes one way. Carefully pull up from the bottom with a bit of force. Do not, and I repeat, do not press the shift button in at all during the removal process or even after you have it off the car or you will have a really hard time putting it back on. So before we unplug everything from the center console, you can see everything is still plugged in, but we have it disconnected here. We're just loose. We need to test which fuse we're gonna tap into. And in order to do that right here, we can kind of pop this little panel off. There we go. And you can see in here, 
are all the fuses. Ignore this stuff. This is for my own OBD stuff, but for my dash cam. But you can see some of these fuses in here. We need to find which one is powered, has power running through it when the car is on. When you open the door without turning the ignition on, which one of these has constant power running through it? And in order to test that, we're gonna use a fuse tester. So we need to go plug the battery back in. We have to attach this to a ground. And if we look all the way in there, this little bracket right here is ground. So let's clip this onto a ground real quick. As you can see, we are now connected to a ground and we can start testing which fuse. We're looking for one of those number 10s in red. So if we touch a number 10, we're looking for one to light up, which it's doing when the battery is on and the car isn't turned on. So you can see this has constant power going through it with the ignition off. So this is the one that we're gonna pull. With that out of the way, it's now time to unplug all the connectors on the underside of the center console. They all have a little tab that you push in and then you pull the clip out. It doesn't matter if you get confused on where they go because they all only fit in one way. All right, so this is the kit. This is the module wiring harness that we get. And there's a couple of wires. This might look confusing, but it's really not if you follow my lead. So black is ground. We'll attach this ground easy. Two of these wires get put to the pins for the start stop button, which we'll do. And ignore this blue one. And then the last one, which is red, is for power, which we're now going to route to the fuse box. And we're going to fuse jump one of the uh one of the fuses in here so follow my lead on this and everything should theoretically work out here's a photo to help clarify things as your wiring harness is probably in chinese like mine looking at the wiring harness the red wire is power the black is ground and then we have a black clip and three wires with pins some wiring harnesses are different but it really doesn't matter we only need two wires with pins i recommend using the two colored ones and ignoring the white one the black clip is also where we'll put the pins that we pull from the factory harness i'm going to route this all the way to the fuse box and I can't reach it with my finger. So I have this little skewer, I'm sure you can use whatever. And we're gonna shove it kind of like here I found and this can get me through the floor right here. Yep, and now it's out on the other side. It's over there and we're gonna route this all the way up and into there. Of course, they only gave me like a foot of wire and this doesn't reach the fuse box. So I'm just gonna make it a bit longer. I have some extra wire. If you have red wire, obviously that could make it look a little cleaner, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna splice like a foot more in so this comes out clean. So we're cutting this off. We don't need that. Stripping the end of this wire here. So we'll let this cool off and then we'll run the, the rest of this wire up into the fuse box. All right, so we have the fuse from the correct spot. We now have to put this in our fuse tap and then put another one in. All right, so from the pack, we grab the right size fuse tap. We take the original fuse from the car and we put it in the lowest one right here. And then we take, this was theoretically gonna be the other one, which works, but we're gonna take a similar one from fuse kit right here we're gonna put a new fuse right on the top and now we are good to go now we have to connect this back to that wire we just ran so we have now fuse tapped that top fuse right there and it is in and it is not going anywhere which means we have power now going to this when the battery's on and we now have just a few more wires to put back in the right spot. All right, so the next thing we have to do is connect this ground wire and we're gonna put it to that right there and that should be a ground. All right, so um, we got the ground on. That was a pain in the butt, but you can see it's underneath there. I had to use some big needle nose pliers because I don't have a deep socket, but that's on, that's good. The last step is gonna be repinning it. Uh, we have pin three and pin six we need to pull out of this right here, which is the start stop. Now, of course, this comes in Chinese and you guys saw the diagram, this doesn't help. But what I noticed is all three of these are the same. 
they all have the same Chinese on them, which was a bit confusing at first, but now I just believe it doesn't matter which two you use, as long as you complete the circuit. So I'm labeling pin three and pin six, and we're gonna pull pin three and pin six from this, and then put them in this right here, and then we'll be good to go, and it should work. So let's start by taking this little clip off here. So we kind of have to, yep, pull this little clip off. And now we have our diagram. So we're looking for pin three and pin six. And as you can see on this side, we have one, which is empty, two, three. And on the other side, we have four, five, and six. So we need to pull three and six. So let's pull number three now. So in order to remove this, kind of get a good grasp, on the wire, which number six is blue and white. We're gonna push the pin in and pull out at the same time. We have now pulled number six pin out. We're gonna take number six and we're gonna put number six in place of our original one. It should slide right in as so. Now we're in, so number six is in. We're gonna label this number six as well. So now we have to remove pin number three, which is blue and yellow, kind of a pain in the butt to grab, but I got it. We're gonna push the pin in and pull at the same time. And out we go, pin number three. And then we're gonna put our own pin number three that we've labeled back into the three spot. Now we're good. Now let's label this three, and then we're at the last step. Now we're gonna take our own harness that it came with right here, and it has a clip already. What we need to do is, as we know, number six on our pin is right here, and number six is green. So we're gonna take our green wire and plug it in the same way. A okay, number six, which is green and green is right here. Now that you're both connected, we can plug this in and everything should be connected as it's supposed to. I'm just gonna tape off these two wires, but everything should be good to go and wired in correctly now. With the harness officially plugged in, it's time to reassemble the center console. I put the little black clip back on top of the connector and plugged all the wires back into where they came from. Then I slid the center console back on and decided to test the push start before I put everything back on. So theoretically, with everything reconnected back in, this isn't in just yet. We're gonna test out the car. So foot on the brake, theoretically pressing the start. We'll start the car, baby. And just like that, everything's good to go. Right, and we put this over it. Just like that, we tighten the bottom like that. And then we can pull this down and reconnect that back in and now everything should be back in place and we are good to go let's plug the battery back in and we have a working audi r8 style buttons thank you for watching i guess uh let's go plug the battery in all right so you already saw it but you can either start it with this or you can start it with the start button but we're also going to test out the drive select so foot on the brake oh my keys are not here i think the keys are on the floor Dude, I was like, no. Yeah, I was like, wait, this makes no sense. I don't have the keys. Here we go. All right, try it again. All these codes will go away when we start driving the car. Real moment of truth is drive select. I guess when everything loads up. We're in dynamic. Now we're in individual. Now we're in comfort. You can hear the exhaust valves opening and closing. Dynamic again. Everything works like a charm. 
Now, for all those wondering where and how I got the steering wheel, I'm in a lot of Audi A3 S3 RS3 groups, and I found this automotive page because she was promoting it in a group. This is her page. It's called Modified Car Show, as you guys can see here. She sells a ton of stuff, and she's from Shenzhen, China, and works directly with the actual factory that makes this stuff, which is super cool. Literally click in here. I'll have a link to this down in the description below. Make sure to check it out. Use code Hayden, mention Hayden, H-A-Y-D-E-N, in the messages here, just click message and message her and let her know that I sent you and you'll be able to get a discount, which is super cool. You can see she has a ton of really cool products here. You could probably email her as well if you wanted that option, but your best bet is to click message because she's super active on uh, the page here. But this is all the stuff that she got. This is everything that I got. My wheel came assembled with the buttons, but you can choose to get the buttons yourself and install them in if you want to do that. But they have a ton of super cool Audi products for the A3, the S3, the RS3, for all other Audi products as well, BMW. I mean, they have everything. So it's really cool. Highly recommend checking it out down in the comments below. And I'm saying her because the actual owner of this page is called Christina Chen. And I believe if I can find it, this is her right here. You can either message her directly. This is who I usually speak to. And she was able to send this to me. I sent her uh, a PayPal business. She sent me her link, uh, a long email. I paid her on PayPal business. And it came to me in about two to three weeks. She sent me tracking and she's super legit and super reliable. So I highly recommend and using her or messaging modified car show to get your wheels with that being said definitely make sure to smash the like button turn on post notifications subscribe guys i'll answer all your questions down in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video peace you can just kind of like slide it ow i just poked myself we? Pull me closer